So, I realized after making like 6 or 7 videos, I didn't make a review for this printer. So I decided, for this episode, I'd do a review on this printer. So, I got this printer last year as a Christmas present because I really wanted to get into 3D printing. But, all the printers are very expensive if you want a good quality print. So, after scouring the internet for a bit, I watched a video by a channel called Corridor Crew, who make really good videos. And this guy called Ren was printing stuff with this printer, and the quality of the prints was so good. So, after doing some research, I realised that this printer cost about £160, which is quite a lot. And I don't know if I was going to be able to get it. But then, December rolled around. And turns out they were selling this printer at half price, so about £90 at Christmas. So, I got it, set it up on Christmas Day, and then I printed my first ever thing, which was a little cat that I probably can show a video of you right now. And the film that came with it was just enough to print that, but nothing else. That's enough about me, so now let's review the printer. So this printer can print 120mm wide, 120mm long, and 120mm high, which is pretty good, but after printing some stuff, I've realised that it prints more around 110mm, 110-100mm, rather than 120 And this size for the print bed is, is about 120 but I think they just made it bigger just to make it sound slightly more appealing. The print quality of this printer is really good. Like, as you can see from this Baby Yoda, which was one of the first things I printed, the quality of it is insane. Like, sure, the fingers fell off. That's probably because the plastic that supported it and the finger was, like, too close together and it fell apart. But I've, I only lost two fingers in total. But even then, it looks pretty convincing. And the ears are smooth. There's lots of detail, like in the nose and the mouth. The eyes are perfect. You can even see the wrinkles of the skin, or back there. And you can see the wrinkles on the top of the head. Because it's a 3D printer, you can see where the print head went. And see all the little circles that the printer made when it was printing. Which, if you're not looking at the top a lot, should be fine. This printer can print very high quality detailed prints without any pr problems. It's also good at like adding more texture in the way. As you can see the actual clothes of the Baby Yoda are pretty nice and smooth but the fur bit which in real life would be very fluffy has a little texture to it which helps differentiate from the actual cloth bit from the fur bit which I think is pretty nice and sure the supports look a bit messy but that's because I didn't have the equipment back then to properly clean it. This printer uses a micro SD card to transfer the prints from your computer to the printer or using a cable to connect your computer directly to the printer which both of these came with the printer which I think is pretty nice. However, my computer can't take a micro SD card straight away, so I gotta use a SD card adapter to connect it to my laptop, otherwise I can't use it. Which can get a bit annoying after a while, when you're printing a lot of stuff, but after a while you just get used to it and it's not that bad. So, this printer comes with two parts on this side and one part on the back. It has two parts on this side. One for the micro SD card to go into, like this, and the other for the cable to go through. The cable is a USB to a micro USB, so it's not super modern, but eh, it's fine. I've seen some people complain about this hole because, as you can see, the micro SD card is very thin, but this hole is very thick. So, as you can see, there's a little place for the SD card to go into. But, the SD card can sometimes get shoved on top of it. 
which I've never had the issue before, but sometimes they can go on top and get stuck in there. But for, I've never had that issue. I've always had it go into the hole perfectly most of the time. Not this time, obviously. But, uh, but some people have complained about how that hole is a bit too big. The back of the printer has a fan to blow out the air, a switch to turn it on, off and on, and the power port where you plug in the power cable. And the other side has a filament spool holder. The top of the printer has the boarding tube, the cables that run towards the extruder down here, and to the nozzle and everything else and has the filament feeder. It's powered by one brushless motor and you feed the plastic through and you feed the plastic through by first pushing this lever back and feeding it through the hole and you feed it through the hole there. You push it back, feed it through and then you keep put you keep feeding it until it goes all the way down to all the way through the boarding tube. You'll be able to tell if it has gone that far because the filament won't be able to go any further. You could let the motor push the plastic through but that takes a lot long time and it's just quicker to feed it through yourself. I've noticed that sometimes the plastic doesn't make it past this little fitting here. And this fitting's here so you can take out the boarding tube if you want to replace it or take out stuck filament stuck inside which is an issue that I've had plenty of times. Sometimes the filament doesn't make it to the boring tube, so what I had to do was unscrew these two screws, lift this bit up, which comes out quite easily, and you'll be left with two long screws and this little bit here. Take it out, you feed it through this little bit metal piece, feed it through that, and you reassemble everything, but with the plastic through this bit here. When you turn on your printer, you'll be greeted with the logo plus all the menus and a light around the knob. If you look closely, it's just two, I think, LEDs with the little glowing bit of plastic around it to make give it the effect that it's fully glowing. But it's good enough for the price point that I got it for. The menu has three options. First one is the print. You select it by pushing the button in, you can access all the files that are in the micro SD card, choose your print and it'll start printing, it'll give you this menu, which gives you the option to pause, cancel, increase the speed, which I've used quite a lot to save time in prints, change the heat of the bed and change the heat of the nozzle. The second option, which is preheat, is very self-explanatory, it's just to preheat the nozzle and the bed. You can either select the nozzle option and preheat it that way, same with the bed, or you can just press start and it'll just go to the default of 190 degrees for the nozzle and 50 for the bed, which I think is just high enough for PLA, but I recommend a bit higher temperature between 195 and 200 just to get a nice print. So I usually just click in the bed section and click out because it will remember your previous heat option so if you set it at 60 degrees last time it'll remember that and give you the option to set it at 60 again same with the um, nozzle the maximum the nozzle can go to is 280 degrees and the maximum the bed can go to is 60 degrees which for a hobbyist like me it's perfect it's a lot more than you probably will need you back out, you got the menu section, you got the move section, and in the move section you got the ability to move the nozzle left and right. You got the option to you got the option to make the bed go forwards and backwards, and you got the option to make the print head go up. Which is hard to see, but if you look closely it is going up and down. You can also feed the plastic through. If I can if you can hear that loud high pitched noise. That's just the mo that's just the brushless motor up here that I showed you earlier, pushing the plastic through. Also, don't hold the fan. I just did that so you can actually hear. That seems like all the options, but there are two extra features that are hidden. One, which is that if you hold in the button at the preheat option, it will 
realign the print bed. And the last thing I want to show is that if you press, press the button down above the move section for a couple seconds, it'll come with smart config started. And that means you can connect this printer to the internet and to an app on the phone. So when you do it, if you do it correctly, it will say con the configuration has worked and so or something like that. And it'll come up with the IP address up here. On the computer, all you have to do is type the IP address on your search bar and it'll come up with this website kind of thing with the temperature and a place for you to paste in your G code, which is quite good, but I won't recommend it because it takes a long time depending on your Wi-Fi. And it's just a lot easier just to put it in it. Put the and it's a lot easier just to use the SD card or the cable. And that's my review on the Monoprice Select Mini V2. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. The reason why there was no uploads last week was because I was too sick to make any videos. So yeah, hopefully the schedule can go back to normal. But because of the school, because of the fact that school started again, I might have this issue again where I can't upload sometimes. So yeah, just bear with me and I'll try and put out as many videos as I can. So yeah, bye.